Good morning and welcome to Wednesday. Trust that you had a wonderful night and you are all prepared for this new and wonderful day. This morning as we gather, we give thanks to Almighty God for all that He is doing in our lives. We thank God for even bringing us back into this arrangement again today. We thank God for the light that we have seen as we open our eyes and recognize that it is a new day. And now we come into this space and I invite you now to find your space, your usual space where you won't be disturbed. Come away for a few moments with me and allow yourself to receive that wonderful inspiration that comes only from the one who has called us into being and helps us to recognize really and truly who we are and who he has made us to be. Come now, come away. As Jesus oftentimes came away from others and he was by himself, connecting with his heavenly father renewing, revitalizing, remembering. Remembering home, remembering where he had come from. We all have forgotten. In our lives, in our journeys, we, we have forgotten. We have forgotten where we have come from. We have forgotten our father. And we try as best we can to remember, to recall. But we know that we have forgotten for the most part. So let us use times like these to try to recall who we are, to try to recall the light that we are and be reminded. So come now into your heart space. Just bring your attention into your heart, however you accomplish that whether you need to touch your heart or just focus on it. Just come into your heart space and feel, feel yourself in your heart. Allow your awareness to be in your heart. And just breathe slowly, intentionally and consciously into your heart space. Just take deep breaths into your heart space. And just feel your heart being enlivened and expanded just by this act of breathing. Feel that expansion. Allow yourself to breathe normally now, but be aware that you are breathing. And from this space of awareness, Create a sense of compassion for the world. Compassion for persons that may need it. Create a sense of love, deep, deep, meaningful love. Not transactional love, but just deep love. Feel that love. But at the same time, just feel that sense of gratitude for all that is. Gratitude for this beautiful light that has come into our world this day. And we can open our eyes and there it is. There is that wondrous sunshine, that warmth, that light, that ever-present light. And in this space, in this wonderful space, we turn our attention as we open ourselves up and we allow ourselves to be at one with the divine. Pray with me, O oh, ever loving God, who today calls me to abide in the eternal bosom of love. I offer my thanks for a new day 
and a new opportunity to correct the wrongs of yesterday. I ask continually for your guidance and thank you for your steadfastness in not letting me or leaving me, but constantly molding and shaping me into what you know me to be. As I begin this week, I ask that you go before me and provide me with a path to follow. May your messengers be ever patient in showing me the way and may my day, day by day, be for you. And may I desire more and more to listen and to follow. Amen. Our reading for this morning is from the Gospel according to John, the 8th chapter, reading from verse 12 to 20. John chapter 12, John chapter 8, verse 12 to 20. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the Pharisees said to him, You're testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, because I know where I've come from and where I'm going. But you do not know where you I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is valid. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two Witnesses is valid. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me testifies on my behalf. Then they said to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words while he was teaching in the treasury of the temple. But no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. Here ends the reading.
Jesus, the light of the world. We hear it out of the mouths of the little ones as they share with us this morning. I am the light of the world, Jesus says. And he bears witness to himself because he knows that his father too bears witness to him. Jesus in continually engaging those who are willing to challenge him is forever causing them to come up higher, to look at the world from a higher place. Jesus speaks of himself as being at one with the Father and it is there that Jesus is able to attain the light that he speaks of. When we listen to the words of Jesus and we listen to how he engages those who challenge him, those who are challenging him from the comfort, as it were, of their religious tradition, those who, as far as they're concerned, they have received the truth, they have known the truth, and what Jesus is saying makes no sense to them because it's not part of their truth. And therein lies the challenge because even here Jesus Jesus indicates that you don't you don't know me because you don't know the Father. And it's an insult in a sense because you know, here are individuals who would believe that they, they know God, they obviously know God. And for Jesus to say this to them, it it really challenges them. Um, to probably give some thought if they are so desirous to to think beyond what they know. The notion of the light is a very powerful image that has been part of the Christian message from the very beginning. And it is one that you and I need to embrace. Be in light. But the ability to be light requires that the Father be present. In other words, in order for us to speak of light, we, we need to be acknowledging Source. Source must be shining true. Source must be coming true at every moment of every day. And yes, we have been taught in our world from the time we were born to develop this sense of self that you go after what you need and you are in this materialistic world and you are a solid physical being and you make your way in this world. And all of a sudden now as we go into this new period it appears where there is so much talk about spirit and not talk about spirit in the way that perhaps it was spoken about um, the day of Pentecost and immediately following but the talk about spirit now seems to be from a different perspective. It is more a recognition that we are spiritual beings. It is so that spirit is not something that is given to us as such. Spirit is something that we become more and more aware of, more and more conscious of. And yes, that thinking of being conscious would not have been around in Jesus' day. But in our time, we understand what this means. And so the invitation is to become more and more conscious of the spiritual nature of ourselves. That we are more than just this flesh. We are more than this, these bones and blood and flesh. That we are more than this. Actually, this is this small part of ourselves. So when we hear this kind of thinking then, and we hear Jesus' words, they begin to make even more sense because here's Jesus saying that he is one with the Father. The Father is spirit. You know, the Father is pure light. So when he says he is one with, this, with the Father, he is not focusing on the physicality of his being. He is focusing on himself as he knows himself to be spirit. And the more he becomes aware of this, the more in his understanding the Father is able to shine through, to radiate through. 
So that's Jesus. But Jesus, while present with us, has also ended his earthly journey in this physical realm. He's no longer physical with us. But you and I are here. And we have his example. We have his approach. We have his understanding. In fact, we probably have a little more clarity than those who might have heard him in the past. We understand more because our science and our knowledge has increased manifold. And so we have greater clarity if we so choose. So here we are. And Jesus is saying that the Father bears witness. The Father is manifested through him. Now what of you and what of me? What do we need to do to ourselves or with ourselves to enable ourselves to have that union with the Father, to make that connection, to be conscious of that connection? As we, as we present ourselves here in the middle of this week, in the middle of this week, and as we take a moment to breathe, and as we release all that has gone in the past few days, as we realize sometimes the emptiness of many of our actions, as we realize the waste of much of our time, as we stay here in the middle of this day, in the middle of the week, sorry, as we stay here in the middle of the week, we are in a space where we're being invited to be more open to the divine presence, to allow it, to allow the Father to be witness and recognized as being even more close of opening our awareness to acknowledging how close the Father really is to each of us. And even more especially, how close the Father wants to be to each of us. So here's where we are today, as we journey this day. Let us journey with awareness having a greater understanding of what Jesus meant when he was saying that there are two testifying. There's himself and there's a father. Again, as in yesterday morning, there's an awareness that Jesus is never alone. Jesus is always in the presence of the father. How often times in your life do you feel that you are alone? That you fail to recognize the presence of the Father right there with you, holding you up, giving you the support you need. I pray, I trust, I hope that you will come to understand the importance of growing, growing more and more aware of God's presence and deeply allowing that presence to manifest so that there's always two to bear witness, you and your Father. And unlike those who challenge Jesus, please ensure that not only do we know Jesus, but we also know the Father. And not only do we know ourselves, but we know the Father through ourselves. All of this is of extreme importance to us in these days to come. My prayer for you as my prayer for myself is that we will journey forward with the awareness that is necessary at this time 
to allow that light to shine with brilliance that God may be adored and blessed by our world.